my mic. Hey, uh, hey, uh, for whatever reason, I think we're working now. All right, that was an interesting start to the morning, wasn't it? Oh, trust me. Um, you can see I'm relatively new to this. We are in our fourth straight week. Um, no, Kylie, you're not the only one not hearing. I couldn't hear me over the mobile phone either. I've got my mobile phone here as a fallback to make sure I can hear what you're hearing. Woo, we're on. We are on. We're in our fourth week, and you'd think I'd know what I'm doing by now. Clearly, clearly not quite. Um, over the weekend, I've been thinking of improvements. One of them, which I need to add to the list now, is figure out why the microphone wasn't working. But I've unplugged the external mic and I'm now just using the um, the Mac mic as is and it should be fine anyway. A couple of other little things I'm going to um, set up so it looks more professional uh, over the coming weeks. So look for those improvements. I've moved the office around a little bit, getting a bit more light here. Looking good. A couple of things before we get started. A couple of things. Number one, thank you to you guys for helping build this up. It's absolutely phenomenal. We started with six viewers and today, you know, we're, we're kicking off with 150 odd live viewers. So that is absolutely phenomenal. Keep telling your friends, keep spreading the word, keep hitting the subscribe button and the like button so it spreads across YouTube because look, essentially the more viewers we have, the more pull we're going to have to get these big name photographers like your Tom Putt who's coming up this Thursday and of course we had Sue Ellen Cook last week. If you missed out on seeing Sue Ellen Cook's incredible presentation, jump back to my YouTube channel after this, click on the video tab and scroll down till you find Sue Ellen Sadie Cook's presentation. Have a look at that. Well worth it. Um, absolutely brilliant photography. I've got some other big names lined up and I'll tell you more about those throughout the week. Of course, I've been working over the weekend on a photography competition. It will be a free photography competition. Nissi Filters have given me a prize to give away and I'll let you know when I'm finished putting it together. I'm hoping to have it finished put together this week and have all the details of how to enter, um, et cetera, et cetera. But the big news is we're going to do the live judging live on YouTube one morning like this. What else have I got to tell you? Do, do free comp. I've got some notes over here. Excuse me. Oh, one other thing. I'm getting a lot, a lot of emails and uh, questions about relatively basic Photoshop queries or hiccups, if you like. And um, the point I want to bring up is down in the description below is my most popular beginner Photoshop workflow course and 99% of the questions that I'm receiving would all be answered um, for those that are new, relatively new to Photoshop would all be answered by doing that short course. It's only three hours worth of content or something like that and it will give you an incredible structure, an incredible base foundation knowledge of Photoshop to be able to keep up more comfortably, I suppose, with what we're doing here. A lot of the questions are really simple ones like what does this keyboard shortcut mean or what does the layers and the masks do and all of those are covered in that beginner workflow. So I would say if you're having trouble keeping up or you really want to learn Photoshop then take advantage of that course down below. It's now choose whatever price you like. If you want to put a little donation in, that is much appreciated. If you can't afford it, just take the course as a free gift. That's absolutely okay with me. And build that foundation of Photoshop knowledge so you're not so frustrated um, trying to keep up. Because in, in reality, these are some of the things that we're doing on this channel are pretty advanced techniques. Um, I, try them, I try and break them down and make them as simple as possible, but they are in fact pretty Pretty advanced techniques. Okay. Got lots of questions. Lots of people active this morning. Happy Easter to everyone. I hope you got lots of chocolate. I pretty much ate all mine already. Um, I had a bit of a chocolate hangover this morning, I think. But happy Easter to everyone. I hope you had a great weekend um, wherever you are. One last thing. I have now created a resources folder in Dropbox. Again, if you look in the description, you will see a link 
which will take you to an email sign up. You'll sign that email form and an email will be sent out with the Dropbox folder information in there. Now that Dropbox folder is not only going to be used for today, it will be used for every future video where we do an example follow along, so where the images are required. So you only need to sign up to that email form once, keep that Dropbox link handy, and each time we do a follow, follow along mini workshop like today, those images, I'll place them in there ready to go. So keep that link handy. You will also, if you're not already part of my email list, when you sign up through that email form, you will become part of the email list. I'm not too salesy. In fact, I send out a weekly photography tip each and every week, and I only send out some specials on the courses one or two times a year, really. So I'm not hassling you with all this spammy buy my stuff stuff. Um, pretty much just good value content there. All right, all right, should we get into it? This is going to be fun, I think. And this is a brand new one for everyone. So even those that are doing my courses at easywayphotography.com.au, if you're interested in learning Photoshop workflows, take a look at that, or as I said, the beginner courses in the description below. And even those that have gone all the way through to my advanced courses at thebohemiancreative.com.au have not seen this one. It's brand new. It's based on one of my own images. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's pretty easy, but it's pretty effective. Let's, let's get into it. Let's get into it. I've got these three images here. One, two, three. That's the entire image is made up of those three images. So if you want to follow along, look, to be honest, maybe it's better to watch me do this live first and then come back, download the images and watch along again because you have the ability or well, a couple of things that are, of benefits that you won't get in the live stream. You have the ability to change the speed of the video via the little cog setting in the bottom right corner down over there somewhere. Okay, so you can change the speed setting and slow me down. And number two, you can hit the pause button without losing track of where we're at in within the live stream as well. So you can try and follow along now if you like, but it might be easier to download and watch again. And plus, I get two views for the price of one on the video. How good's that? Lastly, before we do get started, and I've been banging on a bit, haven't I? We do this every morning at 10 a.m to make sure that you don't miss out. And I know a lot of you have already done this. Thank you very much. Hit the subscribe button. And then on the right hand side of the subscribe button, you'll see the little bell, ding, little ding, get notifications, hit the bell, get the notifications. You'll get a reminder via email and a reminder to your mobile phone every time I hit the go live button on YouTube. So you won't forget, you know, for a lot of you, I know it's it's become part of the routine. It's part of my routine now. Wake up in the morning, looking forward to seeing you guys. I hope you're not sick of me yet. I hope you're not sick of me yet. Um, but I look forward to seeing you all here each and every morning during the week. So hit the notifications bell, um, hit the subscribe button, and join us with all this other fun crew every day of the week, Monday to Friday. All right, let's get into it. We're going to click, well, we open those three images, and that's just as simple as File, Open, and then go to your Downloads folder, where you've downloaded those new images, and open them into Photoshop. Now, if you download the entire folder in one go, it might turn up in your Downloads folder as a zip file. If that's the case, you'll need to unpack the zip file before you open those photos in Photoshop. So that may require going to your downloads folder and double clicking on that zip file. And then you can come back to Photoshop and click file, open, downloads. There's mine. That's the folder you're looking for. Apple, sorry, Earth Apple Core. If I double click in there, there's those three images and I can click on them and open them into Photoshop like that. You want to open up all three of those. You can see I have them here. Wispy Clouds, Astro, Apple Flesh. That will be the internal sections of the Apple. Okay, we want Wispy Clouds first. Now, we're going to use the 3D filter. Okay, but, and a big but, some people are having, are having some trouble with that. And to be honest, it's brand new to me too. 
and I'm not really sure what those issues are. I'll try and find out. But I'm going to show you another way you can create this sphere shape if your 3D filter is not working like some of you are having issues with. So let's do that. Um, what I need, to, I'm going, so skip this if, you, if, if you're going to do it the 3D way and you've done the 3D tutorial before last week, then you can skip this section because it's a different way for those of us that the 3D filter is not working. I'm going to click on the crop tool and then click here in the menu and select square. Okay, that will do. Click OK. And then up to the filter menu. Which one was it? Distort? Yeah, distort and spherize. I don't believe this is as good as the 3D filter, but let's see. Um, turn the amount to 100, blend mode normal, click OK. Whoops. Sorry, I've made a mistake there. I was wondering if it was going to do that, and it has. Okay, Command or Control Z to undo. What I need to do is flatten that as a square. Layer, flatten, and then we'll do that again. Filter, distort, spherize, because what was happening before, it, it was working on the entire layer. The crop was there, square, but it could still see the rest of the layer, so it was working on the entire layer. If we click OK, you can see we get that beautiful spherical shape. Spherical! Managed to get that out this morning. A um, bit of a tongue twister, hard word to say. One of those hard words to say. Now, <laughs> ignore me. Sorry, ignore me. Now, the next step, the second tool down, we're going to click on the elliptical marquee tool. You can hit M as a keyboard shortcut, but then what we want to do is right click here and making sure, because the default is the rectangular marquee tool, click on the elliptical one. I think the 3D filter is easier if you can do it. We're going to just sit inside the corner of there, of our image, hold shift down, click and zoom in, or drag in like that. We can just do something like that, and then I can use, once I let go where it's close, I can use the arrow keys to get it absolutely perfect. That looks pretty good. Command or Control J will take that selection and transfer it to its own layer. We can turn off the background, and we have a pretty good spherical shape. Okay, that will work. Okay, now let's get into the tutorial. That's only a backup if the 3D filter throws up an error and doesn't work for you. I'm going to move up to my history panel here, go back to the start, and let's get started. Fingers crossed. I did it pretty smoothly yesterday afternoon. Hopefully we can do it pretty smoothly. Can I move the video down? Excuse me. Anthony says, can I move the video box down a little so we can see the top banner on Photoshop. Um, give me a second. Oh. Is it that one down? I can see that banner. I can see the menus. Let me just double check here. Yeah, my phone, I seem to be able to, yeah, I seem to be able to see it on my phone and my stream. I tell you what, Anthony, sometimes if you're watching on the phone and you double click on the phone, it will zoom in a notch. It'll zoom in a notch. So just double click on your phone and it will zoom back out. Maybe that's what's happening. I've had that happen on my phone before. It tends to just zoom in about 10%. Roberta, the Dropbox link, you can see it in the description below, okay? So um, the information's in the description below. Click on the link below. It will take you to a sign-up page, and that will shoot you off an email with the Dropbox link, okay? Check your junk mail if you can't see it. it will, it's automated. It will come over to you within 60 seconds, two minutes maximum, okay? Um, unless we've got 300 people all trying to do it at once, then it might take a little bit longer, but it should be fine. It should be fine. Oh, when we drop down the banner. Uh, 
Okay. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. When I drop down the menu banner, you can't see behind my profile picture. Okay. Um, let me... One more. We'll just fix this on the run, hey? Let me come over here and we'll go... Order... What happens if I do that? Okay, I'm not sure how to fix that. I will just verbalize the menu sections that I'm using. We won't be heading to those menus too often anyway. All right, let's get into it. We're already, we're nearly 20 minutes in and I haven't even done anything, okay? So, sorry about that. Um, I'm, I'm making this up as I go to some degree and learning um, the live stream features as I go. It's not perfect, I understand. Anthony's all good to go, I believe. Okay, we've got this image. We're starting with Wispy Clouds. We're going to go 3D menu, and we did a 3G, 3D tutorial the other day. Look up that one if you haven't already seen it. It was a lot of fun. In fact, you'll see it when we do this one. Move down from 3D to new mesh from layer, and over to mesh preset, and over again to sphere. Okay, and we get something like that. Now, there's a couple of things we're going to do. We can click on the little light bulb icon here and then move down and we can change the lighting. Let's have the lighting sort of coming sort of like that. Okay. Just move, it doesn't really matter. Put the light wherever you like. That looks pretty good. Now we need to, I want to remove the shadows. Okay, because otherwise we need to mask them out later. So, are they in textures? No. Looking for shadows. Oh, if I click on the 3D menu. So you, I was in the layer menu. I need to click on the 3D menu. Okay, click on Sphere in the 3D menu, just here, see? And then Cast Shadows, turn that off. We got there. I was getting a bit nervous because I haven't used this very much. That's perfect. Okay, we're ready to go. Command or Control A will select all. Command or Control C to copy. And we move over to our Astro image. Command or Control V. You probably get this little warning too. Apparently one of my photos was in a different color space. That's okay. Click OK. We are golden. That is beautiful. Okay. Next step. We're going to create, jumping back here, we're going to create this jagged apple core texture. Okay. So we're just going to end up having these two shells, top and bottom, and then we'll fill in with this core. We'll fill in with the core. So I'm on, where am I? No, I'm on that one. Astro is now the working image. Perfect. Sorry for being a pest, Anthony says. No, mate, you're not a pest. Um, it's perfectly okay. Answer those questions. If, if it's not perfect, what you can see, the feedback helps me make this better and better for everyone. And I'm always trying to improve um, throughout the live stream, but also in the off time, when I'm not live, I'm looking at ways and researching, Googling and et cetera, et cetera, how to make this more professional um, for you guys. But you probably like the non-professionality anyway, do you? You know, bumbling around is kind of funny, but it means we don't get the job done. But here we go. We're back over here. What I need to do, remember this one, come down here to where the layers panel is and click from 3D back to layers if you're not already and you'll see a much more familiar layer set out with a background and the sphere here, the new sphere. Okay, click on the sphere. Actually, yeah, click on the sphere for now and then come up to the third tool down. Tom Putt says, he loves me just the way I am. Thanks, Tom Putt. I love you too, mate. You're an absolute legend absolute legend of Australian photography. And I'm looking forward to having your presentation live here on Thursday. Put that one in the diary. It's going to be a lot of fun. Third tool down. 
is the lasso tool. So click L for lasso. So if I press L for lasso, oops, forget that bit. You'll get the third tool down. Then right click on the third tool down. And we want to select, so just right click on that tool. We want to select the polygonal lasso tool. What a cool name, polygonal lasso tool. Click that one. It's going to give those beautiful straight edges. And just sort of come down, whatever you think. It doesn't really matter, we can make this better. Just click about there, just outside the sphere. And the first step, I kind of like to sort of come up like this first and then just do some kind of crazy, just click all over the place as you come around. But at the very last step, again, I like to sort of have it leading down like that and then click around like so, we get something like that. Okay. Perfect. Now, how should we do the next section? Let's add that to a mask. With the top layer, layer one selected, just click on layer one, and then come down the bottom of the layer panel here, you'll see this little rectangle with a circle in it. If we leave the mouse there like so, you'll see add layer mask, click on that one, and you'll see that happens. But what we're going to do is, I need to see the rest of the sphere so we can do that again for the bottom. And this is not exactly how I did it yesterday, so hopefully this works. Hold down the shift key and click on the layer mask. Okay, and that will turn the layer mask off. And now let's repeat the same process with the polygon lasso tool down the bottom here. Just come up about, I don't know, 25%, a quarter, and we'll come in, again, come in on that nice flat angle. Do a sort of a random -y thing like that. We can, we can change this later. I'll show you how to change it if you're not happy. Perfect. Now, hold shift down again, click back on our mask. Perfect. This is going to work, I think. Now, the next step, press shift or hold shift down and then press delete or backspace. This, will, this, blah, 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 blah. this is a keyboard shortcut that brings up the fill panel and we want to fill this selection on the mask with white. Select white, blend mode normal, opacity 100%, click OK. Command or Control D to deselect that section. That's perfect. Now if you weren't quite happy, let's say I wanted a bit more of the top shell on this one here. Well what I can do is just basically start again and come sort of in like this click, 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 sort of randomly. That's not going to look good, is it? Let's deselect that one. That didn't feel right. Okay, come in here like that. Around, around, around. A little bit down there. Up, down, up, 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 up. Down, down, up. I think that'll be good. Okay, come around again like that. And again, hold down shift and press delete or backspace. And fill with white. Click OK and you'll see that extends down, okay? Now, that's probably a bit too much, right? So one more go, practice makes perfect. Somewhere in between those two. That, I'm feeling it, I am feeling it, that looks good. Hmm, I made a mistake. Command or Control D for deselect. What we now need to do, because I'm taking off this selection a little bit. Sorry, come in here. Here we go. <laughs> come on, come on, we can do it. Together we can do it. I know we can. We're just clicking that random shapes along there. That looks good. This time we need to circle under the bottom because I want to take that away. We press shift delete or shift backspace and this time fill with black, which will take that section away from our mask. Perfect, I hope that's making sense. Let's run with that for now. Glenda Russ, why is, oh, why is the bottom question? Yeah, Peter answered that question. It was in shadow, there's a light source in the original 3D. So if you're creating from that spherize filter, which was the backup solution, you won't have that shadow. But because I had a light source, you will have that shadow. But we'll mess around with that light source in a moment. 
Okay, looking good, looking good. I think we can all get to that point. You know, if it's not working for you, just, you know, delete, start again and follow along again. I think I could make this better, but we won't fuss around with that. We won't fuss around. I like the bottom one. I think the top one could be better, but let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's grab the apple flesh image, which is a picture of sort of tiered, segmented mining, coal mining, okay? Command or control A, command or control C. Click back to our Astro, which is now our base image, command or control V. Again, apparently that image, oh no, the destination space is in Pro Photo. that's fine. I normally use Adobe RGB, but no big deal. Perfect. Okay. All right. We're going good. We're going good. We're just bringing this all together. Now, what I want to do, what I want to do, command or control with that top layer, command or control T, and we'll make this a bit smaller because it only needs to cover the apple essentially, or well, well, the earth, earth apple. That looks perfect, okay, something like that. You can see it's not covering the bottom and the top, but that doesn't matter because it, it's going to sit inside there. And what we can actually do, if I grab this layer, layer two, and drag it below layer one, which is the earth sphere, it now sits inside there absolutely beautifully. That's looking great. And I quite like that. I quite like that. So something like that. Get yours set up like that. And then we will, we will, we will, we're going to do the much the same technique with our polygon lasso tool. So the third tool down, you can right click on that third tool, making sure that you click on the polygonal, polygonal lasso tool. Peter is right. Peter says if you temporarily reduce the opacity of the layer, it will help see what's behind there. Absolutely. I often do that, Peter. Thanks for that tip. Um, okay. Right. So we've got that behind. We're looking good. We're going to come up. I'll zoom in a little bit, actually. Command or Control Plus. We're going to come up right on the tip of where that top core, top earth shell sort of stops there. Click on that point there, and initially we're going to come in pr on a pretty shallow angle like this, okay? And then we will work our way into an apple core shape like this. Doesn't matter if we don't get it perfect first go. And then we're going to work our way down, but don't go straight for that corner. Get down to it. And watch out you don't double click. I'm rushing, aren't I? Command or Control D to deselect if that happens to you. It joined the dots together before I was finished. Click on that point, come in pretty shallow, and then work your way into a midpoint about there. And then don't aim straight for the corner as I was saying, come down to about here and then off on an angle like that. Okay, perfect. Now we can come around, we'll clean up this in a minute. We'll come around here to this point on the bottom. As I said, we'll clean that up in a minute. We're just getting most of this done. Come in on a shallow angle here again, roughly pretty shallow. You can do a couple of clicks in like that. Work your way into a midpoint, something like that. Ah, I keep double clicking and it's messing me up. Okay, stick with me, let's go slower. Sorry, coming one of those days, aren't I? I'm going to take this really slow and deliberate, which is probably going to help you guys following along anyway. I'm trying to do it too fast. Sorry about that, guys. Here we go. Get down to about there, off on a shallow angle there, round the back, come back to this one, shallowish angle again, click, click. Click, 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 click. Work your way into a narrow point in the middle, then start to work your way slowly. We're going to do it. It's going to work. Shouldn't speak too soon, should I? 
and then back out on a shallow angle like this and then around the top. Come back to this point, join the dots. Absolutely, we nailed it. We're going to now, making sure we're on layer two, selected on layer two, come down and click a layer mask. Okay, absolutely perfect. What we can now do, hold down command or control and click on the layer mask of layer one up above here. Command or control, click on the layer mask of layer one. Okay, that gives us that kind of a look. It will highlight the mask of layer one and we want to press shift delete and fill that area with black. Black, normal, 100%, click OK, go. Perfect, command or control D to deselect that section. Hooray, yes, absolutely, I made the selection, the original one without double clicking. We're looking pretty good. Now what we can do, We'll just remove these sections. I've got the polygon lasso tool. Just come around like that. Shift delete. In black, normal 100%. Yes, tidy up. And again. Oh, boom, boom, boom. You can always double click, as we know now, to join those together. Shift delete or shift backspace in black. Okay. Command or control D. Now, if we wanted to, we could make this a, a little bit better. I feel like this edge needs to come in a little tighter like so. Okay, I didn't quite like that exact shape. Look at this. And we come back and we join that together. Shift, delete or backspace in black and that will take out that little section. So if you're not quite happy, I'm not quite happy exactly here either. Let's see how that looks. Shift, backspace or delete in black. Command or control D to deselect. That's looking pretty good. We might just come in this, chew out this section a little bit more. Take another bite out of here. That's looking good. Shift, delete, shift, backspace in black. Command or Control D to deselect. That's looking better, isn't it? Now we can do the opposite. I want to sort of bring this back in a little bit here. Just bring that little bit back. I'm just going by eye what feels like a classic cliche Apple core. Shift Delete. This time we want to fill with white. I want that back. Click OK. This section looks a bit flat. Let's just again shift delete, shift backspace in white, command or control D. And we might just do similar there. Shift delete in white. All right. It's not perfect. I'm pretty happy with that. David's. David says, hi. Hi, David. How are you doing? If you're new, hit the subscribe button. Your name should flash up in flashing lights. I'm not sure if it's working. Whoa, 198. We're only a couple short, one short, in fact, of the record, which was 199 viewers all at the same time. Okay, how are we doing? We're looking pretty good. We've gone from the Astro. We've placed that. That's essentially our raw file now. We're going to add some light, etc. Let me zoom back out to full screen, command or control minus. And let's now add the light to the core. The light is going to make the biggest difference to the core. So making sure we click, and we can name these layers actually, layer two here, double click on the text. We'll call this one core. The top layer, layer one, double click. We'll call this one earth. Perfect, now we all know what we're talking about. Click on the core layer and add a curves layer. Curves. Perfect, we're going to clip that layer down. Once we have the properties panel, you'll see this little icon, a little square with a down arrow. If I click on it, see what happens? I'm getting a little arrow pointing from the curve to the layer below. This means that Whatever I do to this curve only affects that one layer. You can also hold down optional alt and hover between those two layers. 
and clip them together that way. Okay, we're going to add some shadow. Pull down the white point, like so. Invert the layer mask, Command or Control I, B for brush, so we all have the brush, B for brush. Opacity 30% sounds good to me. Flow 50% sounds good. If I click over here on this menu, hardness, zero. Perfect. Now we're just going to start, the light's coming, oops, excuse me. The light's coming from this sort of direction down here. Let me just add a, yeah, let me just add a little arrow where I think the light's coming from. you know, sort of that direction, okay? I think, something like that, roughly. Clicking back on, you don't need to add the arrow yourself. Clicking back on the layer mask, B for brush, we've got that brush. So if the light's coming down that way, you would see a little bit of shadow under this lip, wouldn't you? And that's going to create that lip. Okay, yeah, and that would fade off to nothing. A Little bit of shadow under that lip there. And because we've got it clipped to the core, it's only affecting the core. It's not affecting the, the earth shell. Okay, and that would sort of come off at a 45 degree like so. Back around here, you probably got a little bit of shadow and maybe a little bit of shadow down there and then a bit of shadow around the back here mainly. Just clicking, do lots of little, little taps and clicks. Underneath that shell there would be, as I said. And look, if you're not happy with that, it's starting to get there. You can hit X to go to a black brush. Cindy says she'd like to do it using a full moon. Absolutely, yeah, go creative, get creative. Okay. Couple of questions there. Can you not undo one step, cancel the second click? I'm not sure. Peter says you can. Absolutely you can. Look, to be honest, absolutely. You can do Photoshop a million different ways. Absolutely. There's so many things you can do different ways, shorter, quicker, faster. Um, I try and do everything as fast and as simple as I possibly can so that you guys can follow along. So sometimes I'll take a step in a different manner because I know that it's more reliable or an easier process than doing it the other way. Generally, that's at least what my aim is. Whoops. Okay, let's add another curves layer. Curves. Again, we can click this little icon to clip that down or hold Option and Alt to click that down. Once again, there is other ways of doing that. I could have added the curves layer underneath the other layer and it would have automatically clipped. Um, but for now, we will use the little icon here to clip that layer down, and you'll see it's only affecting that core, which is perfect. Let's deepen those shadows a little bit. Perfect. Command or Control I to invert. With that same brush in white, we will deepen the shadows right around the back here. This is what really gives this composite the depth, you know, by coming up under this lip, you really get a sense that there's a lip there, okay, which you don't, you wouldn't necessarily get if we didn't add the shadow there. Okay, pretty happy with that. Let's add a bit of contrast and a bit of light to the left hand side. Once again, another curves layer. Once again, hit the clipping icon. Lift up. Two points like that. Whoops, not three, two. Let's do that again so everyone can follow along. I'm going to put one point roughly in the middle and push up a little bit. And then I'll put a second point roughly halfway between the left hand side and the point we just placed and pull that down a little. That will give us a lot of contrast, which is looking really, really nice. Command or Control I, B for brush. And we'll just brush that in on the left hand side here. If 
Beautiful, we might do that again. I want a little bit more brightness and a little bit more contrast, curves. Make sure you clip that down, hit the clipping icon. Or, as I said, hold down Option or Alt and hover between. You can see we got clip, 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 clip. They all cascade down like a waterfall, all making sure they only affect that one inner core layer. Okay, what do we want here? I'm just messing around with this curves. Don't really want too much. That's probably enough. Again, similar to before, one point in the middle, push up a little, then one point about halfway, pull back a little to the line. Command or Control I to invert, and with our white brush, we're just going to paint in a little more of that. How are we going? We're following along nicely, hopefully. Which, oh sorry, David says, with the polygon selection tool, you can select the two white boxes on the tool panel Absolutely, David, you can, you can. And that's the way I did it yesterday, but I felt doing it in one go was going to be easier. Um, but yes, absolutely, you can um, do that. You can also hold down Shift. So with the Polygon Selection Tool, let me just show you what David is talking about. You up the top here in the top menu, that was the selection icon that I'm using, which means every time you click, it will give you a new selection. See how my old selection disappears? Okay, but if I wanted to, for example, add to that selection or take away, the way I like to do it is to hold down shift and you'll see my icon. Can you go see the icon on screen? Hopefully it goes from not having anything to having a plus symbol next to it. And I can then add to that selection. Okay, and add to that selection by continually holding down shift. I can also hold down alt and you'll see the minus symbol come up next to the tool and I can come around and minus from that selection. So absolutely a little bit more technical, a little bit more advanced I suppose, but could help do the job, well would help do the job easier. I just didn't want to confuse you guys too much at the time, rightly or wrongly. Okay, I'm happy with the core light. I'm happy with the core light. We hit 200, 202. Woo! I need the fireworks. New record on Easter Monday. Thank you guys for continually supporting what we do. As I said, we can, with these, with the more numbers and the more people and the more eyes we're getting, it's going to attract more and more high profile photographers or make it easier for me to ask and convince photographers to come along and give us their time, which Sue Ellen Cook has already done and Tom Putt has already done and I've got a couple more I haven't confirmed dates for but they have already said yes as well. Hopefully they come through with that. I'm sure they will. Okay, let's add some light to the core and then we'll mess around with the background and that's all there really is to it. We're nearly there guys, we're nearly there. So to mess around with the core we're going to click on the earth layer and then add a curves layer to that. Curves. So this will add a curve on top, but we will clip down again. When you're doing composites, this clipping layer is absolutely one of the most powerful tools ever because it allows you to adjust one element within the entire scene without affecting the other elements. The reason this is a fairly easy composite is we don't really need to match the colors to a certain degree all that accurately because the earth is going to be blue and we're going to add a deep blue purplish scene to the astro behind eventually. Okay, so we don't really need to worry too much about that. A couple of people saying they love it, Jill and Georgie. Thank you guys, thanks for the support, thanks for watching along. It's great to have you here. Okay, so now if we move this, see how it only affects the core? Perfect, let's brighten up some areas just to really get that to sit forward and off the background, okay? If, you, if you've done my essentials or any of my easy way photography workflow, you'll know that I don't like to push these adjustment layers too aggressively in one go, but for this one, we can get away with it. We can push really aggressively. We now press Command or Control I to invert that layer. B for brush, the light's coming from here, so we will Put a bit of light there, that's nice. You can see we're getting a bit of depth and shadow on that side. Look, 
to be honest, there shouldn't really be light down here, should there? But I want to step, we're going to, I want to step or get the shell to stand up off the background a little bit. That's looking great. That's looking great. That's all I need to do for now. Let's work on the background. Click all the way down to the background layer. Click, if your background layer is locked like mine, click the little padlock and unlock it. Press Command or Control T for free transform. Command T on a Mac, Control T on a PC. And I want the core of the Milky Way to be up as it's the light source where that arrow is essentially. So if we right click, now that free transform is active, we get this little menu, we're going to flip vertical. Yeah, something like that. Now if I just stretch out, it will remove, did I paint? Some, you're gonna be laughing at me. That's where I want, that's basically where I want this. So we're just stretching out a little bit. Did I? No, I didn't. I thought for a minute I painted the red arrow on the stars. That would have been a bit of a disaster. Okay, but I didn't. Just stretch that out and we've got this beautiful, we can also rotate a little bit like this. We might stretch out a little bit more. We got that Milky Way core there. That's looking nice. Click OK. We can turn off that arrow now. It wasn't really there. I'll delete that out of the way. OK. That's looking nice. I want a little bit more pop out of this Milky Way. How did I do it yesterday? I think I added, once again, click down on that background layer if you've clicked off like I did. We'll add a solid color layer. Let's have a play with solid color. See what happens. And I want a deep bluish purple. I really like that bluish purple in my astro images in general anyway because I think it gives a really soft, beautiful fantasy feel. Click OK. You'll actually see... Oh, no, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of a funky edge of that blue coming through there. We might have to fix that up later as well. We'll see. OK. It might just add a glow to the edge as well. It's where those masks are joining together. There's a little slither coming through from behind. Okay, let's change the blend mode on this purple layer to, I don't know, let's see what looks good. Scroll on down. I'm thinking it's going to be overlay like that or soft light, soft light. A little bit more luminance, isn't it? Okay, so now we've changed that to soft light. Double click back on the purple layer and we'll just have a bounce around. Something like that looks good to me. Just to your eye, click OK. Now, let's, now you'll notice I haven't clipped this layer down. We don't actually need to, but if we wanted to, wanted to keep the workflow consistent, we could, but because layers only project downwards, they only fall downwards and affect the layers below, because our other two elements are above, we don't need to clip, okay? So we can now add a curves layer. I want to add a bit of punch and a bit of contrast to this astro layer. So we add a curves layer. It's just sitting above that latest color fill layer. And we'll just click in the middle and pull up. Yeah, something like that looks pretty nice. Beautiful. We're getting there. We're getting there. That's looking really good. I just want to double click back on this color fill layer and maybe not so intense. I do like the purple, but just click around. Maybe, oh, that's a bit much, isn't it? Maybe more blue, a little hint of purple like that. Perfect. Perfect. We're getting there. Terry Boyd says, why is my color fill layer black, Terry? Well, when you double click on here, mate, you might be all the way over here on black, okay? If not, just everyone double check a couple of things. To get the exact color fill menu that I have, you want to click on the H icon here. You can see it changes as we go through 
saturation and what's the B stand for? Peter Hammer, what's the B stand for? Brightness, probably. Hue, saturation, brightness, red, green, blue. Um, I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> hue, you want to be on hue so it looks like mine. And then you get to click around to get different colors and hues and saturation from the, well, the hue, sorry, the hue is from this rainbow slider. The saturation point, you get more saturation to the far right, and you can see it, no saturation on the far left, and you get brighter the higher you go and darker the lower you go. Okay, now I've messed mine up, haven't I? Where were we? Maybe for the better, maybe I'll choose a better color. I like that, I like that. Click OK. We're looking good. Well, 218, keep on coming. What a record. Incredible, incredible. If you're new to the channel, and I, I'm guessing a few are maybe coming from YouTube recommendations, we do this every morning at 10 a.m. So the easiest way to never miss out, it's Sydney time, 10 a.m. in Australia. The easiest way to never miss out is click the notifications button, or sorry, click the subscribe and then click the get notifications bell, which is just to the right of that. Okay. Um, we're looking great. We've, we've managed to put the core in, put the light on the core, get the light on the background. We are going to get the colors a little bit better on the core because it should be, I guess, absorbing a little bit of the purplish bluish tones around. So with that being said, I'm pretty happy. Let's get a little bit of that bluish purple tone on the core. Click back on the core layer. Okay. In fact, let's just click on the core layer and then add a solid color layer. And what will happen, it will automatically clip solid color. You'll see this, see how it's only affecting the core now. And because of that, this is a really cool feature. As I move out onto the image, you'll see I have an eyedropper. So I can now just click, you know, that purplish bluish tone. Perfect. That looks great. Something like that. Yeah, the purple, purplish blue, something like that. Perfect. Click OK. And if we now switch this over to soft light, maybe. Yeah, and lower the opacity. We don't want too much. Just a little bit of that purple coming in, help to tie those images into the same environment if you like. Now, last step, we're getting there, we're getting there. It's nearly an hour in. I hope you're enjoying the workshop. Sorry for fluffing about in the beginning, but we've been pretty consistent since we got started. I want to add a little bit of illuminance and a bit of glow to the shell. You know how you see those shots from NASA looking back at the Earth and it seems to be just glowing, beautiful luminance to the shell of the Earth, if you like, to the surface of the Earth. Let's try and get that going. Click on our Earth layer icon because we want to only affect that particular layer. Okay, so click on the Earth layer. Again, initially we're going to use a solid color layer and a beautiful blue green earthly glowish color something I don't know I really don't we're just guessing somewhere around there just guess it initially click OK and now go to the blend mode and click soft light ah, it's not bad it's not bad we can do better I skipped a step double click on the little colorful icon here and we'll see if we can't Look, we're looking for a really bright luminance. We might even mess up, I'm, look, I'm happy with that. Something like that, but we might mess with the blend modes. So let's have an experiment with the blends and see if we can't get a more, like what's screen? No, screen's no good. Color dodge, yeah, no. Whoa. Okay, that's pretty funky. It's always fun just having a play with the blend modes and then seeing if other ideas develop as well. Uh, in this case, I think soft light is probably the best. Okay, we will lower that opacity though. That's pretty good. Click back on the earth layer again. We're going to add another curves layer. And because we clicked down to the earth layer, the, the um, shell layer, 
and put curves, you'll see it automatically clips. Because we're coming up under a clip layer, it just keeps clipping them all in. So we don't have to do anything, which is kind of cool. A little bit more luminance like that. Perfect. You can see it's blowing those clouds out a little bit though. So we could probably lower the opacity. Well, let's see if we can use Blend If to remove it from the highlights. Double click, getting a little bit complex here where it says Curves Layer 7, the layer we're currently working on. Double click to the right hand side, it will bring up this little menu. Look, don't worry if you can't get this section, just skip it. But double click there and we're just going to see if we can remove a little bit of that effect from the brightness. So I've pulled that white slider all the way down to about one third from the black. Hold down Option or Alt and split that. This might not work. It's worked okay. That's looking a little bit better. I might also lower the opacity. Looking good. Looking pretty good. I want that glow in that in this earth core. Maybe the bottom is a bit too much, right? Okay, so let's click on the layer mask. B for brush, X to switch to black, making sure we have a black brush here. And I'll just paint off to maintain a bit of shadow under here, just like that. Final step, we're going to create that, what would you call it? What am I looking for? You know that glow of the earth's atmosphere, that little halo that sits around the earth, little blue oxygen halo. Click on the earth layer, okay, stick with me here. Click on the earth layer, then double click to the right hand side in the blank space, double click. Now, for those of you that like to enter photo competitions, a lot of the techniques that I'm using here are not photographic in nature. Well, in saying that, in actual fact, up until this point, I think we're pretty okay. I think everything has been pretty much photographic in nature, or at least in my opinion, it has been. I wouldn't have any trouble entering what we've done so far in a photo competition. However, I'm now going to add the halo glow. And that may mean you know that that element is not photographic in nature. So make sure you read the rules if you were going to enter something along these lines in a photo comp. Where's glow? Outer glow, see here? Check it out, check it out. Perfect. Now, it's in red at the moment. We don't want it in red, do we? Ah, sorry, cancel first. Missed a step, which was going to cause us grief. Press Command or Control J. Click on the Earth layer, press Command or Control J. Okay, so now we have Earth Copy and Earth Layer. Click back down to Earth Layer. This is better. Double click, reveal this menu. Click Outer Glow. Click on the word Outer Glow to bring up the Glow menu. Click on the word Outer Glow, bring up the Glow menu. Now we're going to set these up. First of all, we'll change the color. Click on the red square and we'll choose a beautiful earthly glow. Yeah, sort of a bright whitish blue. That's looking great. Click OK. And then mess around with your opacity. I've got my opacity at 74. Noise, that looks funky. Let's keep that at zero. Spread, how far out do you want the glow to go? Not far, I've got that at 15. Size. That's kind of diffusing the glow. How much, how far out do we want that to go? I want to keep it to sort of just on the edge like so. So I've got that set to 24, 25. Range, 88. It seems to be spreading out as well. I want that pretty high because it keeps it nice and diffused. 80%. Jitter, no idea, not a clue. Leave it on zero, it doesn't seem to do anything. Click OK, <laughs> click OK. Let's not pretend that I know everything about Photoshop. I don't. Halo, is that what we call it? Yeah, Halo sounds good. OK, now with that being said, we should be able to mask this out. Let's put the, the Earth layer into its own group. Command or Control G puts it into a group. Add a layer mask. B for brush, fingers crossed this is going to work. 
We'll zoom in, Command or Control Plus. Let's push the opacity of our brush, or B for brush, the opacity of the brush to 100%, flow to 100%. Hardness, uh, we'll bump that up a bit too, about 80%. Is it going to work in black? Yes. Okay. I don't really want the glow here. And that's up to you. Maybe you want a little bit of glow there, in which case you could use a slightly softer brush. Or actually, I'll show you how to paint that back in in a minute. If you wanted a little bit of glow around that eggshell, um, earth shell. If you did want to maintain, I would remove it first like so, then go to a X to go to a white brush, put the hardness down back at zero, lower the opacity really quite low, and the flow quite, well, maybe at 50%. And we could just come back and paint in a little, a little white brush, a little hint of glow along that edge, if you like. You can see that coming back there. I don't want too much there. Just a little bit kind of looks nice. Yeah, I quite like that little bit. Do you? It's up to you. That's looking good. Yes, Cindy says, can the glow be removed from specific spots? Yeah, add that layer into a group and add a new mask, and then you can use that mask to paint the glow in and paint the glow out. How cool is that? I don't think it's as good as my one I did last night. Uh, different colors. I, quite, I much more prefer the blue that we're getting here, don't you? That blue. Well, where are we? Oh, no. It's quite similar. It's quite similar. I think it's pretty good. I mean, I like the apple core shape better than on this one. It's more of a classical apple core. Oh, okay. So Peter Hammer says, what was that thing I was looking at before? It was Jitter. I think he's referring to jitter. It says it gets the glow darker in the shadows. Cool. Okay. I think we're done. Go ahead down. If you haven't been following along, go ahead in the description below. There's the link to the download images. As I said, once you have access to that Dropbox folder, you'll have access to all the example images that we use in the future when we do a mini workshop like this one. I hope you found that really fun. Go ahead. I don't know what you can use to maybe come up with your own creations. Um, using this technique, but the apple core technique is a lot of fun. You could also use it, you know, there's that classic sort of Easter egg technique where you can get an egg and maybe cut out the middle and put a person in the egg or something. I don't know. Um, it's, it's really limitless. It's just a bit of fun, having a bit of fun. Thanks for joining me. If it's your first time, be sure, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications button, come along and join us tomorrow. What was the record? We're at 219. Thank you. That is amazing. Be sure to join us again tomorrow with another fun, who knows? I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Another fun photography slash Photoshop presentation. Tom Putt is joining us Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Put it in the diary, set an alarm. It's going to be so much fun, really inspiring. Tom's work is absolutely phenomenal. Okay, so make sure you join us for that. In the meantime, Oh, check out, if you're struggling with Photoshop and you want a really great foundation, check out my workflow course below. Choose whatever price you want, including zero. Take it as a gift if you cannot afford anything. That is completely okay. Until tomorrow, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching along. Stay safe. Stay well. Love to the family. Is that it? Bye for now. I think that's it. Thank you, guys. I'll see you in the morning.